This is Ed from Exotic Blanks introducing you to a new pen blank we're now offering. These blanks utilize Japanese high fiber washi paper with hand drawn patterns that are silk screened onto the medium and clear cast to yield these outstanding new pen blanks. Talking about something I'm more familiar with, these come in a D shaped mold. And as you can see, they have a uh, space on each end of them where the resin is a little longer than the actual tube. None of this is a problem, it's just a matter of approaching it correctly. We want to take off the two ends as we always, as I always do. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting ribbons right off the bat. This is very easy material to turn. So it's just a matter of taking off the ends and don't bite too much as you go across. As you can see, I'm staying fairly far away from the actual blank. I'm just taking off those two corners. Now, if you're more comfortable, you can, of course, take these corners off on a sanding device. You could either go to a belt sander or some other way of sanding off the two corners and making it closer to round before you get started. Uh, to me, this was not all that difficult, but Years ago, I had some problems with the molds, so I, I understand that they can be a little tricky if you're not familiar with them. So whatever is easiest for you, take advantage of your own expertise and figure out whether you want to take them off on the sanding or if you want to actually just turn them off as I'm doing here. Uh, once you get down to the turning around blank, it's very simple. Uh, this is extremely nice material, and as you can see, everything is coming off in ribbons. One of the really nice things about doing these videos is that you can find out how long it actually takes to do something. And in this case, uh, this blank took just less than two minutes to get from the blank that I put on there down to the point that it was ready to take to the uh, sanding device and take off those two ends. So. It isn't difficult. Obviously, I turn faster than a lot of people do, but it really is a fairly simple thing to do. And if you take your time, you can see there are the ribbons and there is the blank. Now, I am going to take off those two sides that are too long. Uh, that will be the next step with my little sanding device. I've used this device in several uh, videos, but in case you haven't seen it before, it is a large disc. Um, uh, about six inches in diameter, two inches thick of uh, maple. And then in the center of it, I've put a piece of Velcro. And then the hook and loop sandpaper is attached to the piece of Velcro. So what that accomplishes is that I can keep moving that sandpaper and use fresh parts of it anytime I want to. Um, it's really very simple, and it, it works very well. As you can see, you can see inside the tube uh, both ends of it now have got a shine to them. They're, they're um, sanded down to the brass. Uh, I then take my small pocket knife and go in and clean out any um, residual that might be in there. Then the blank is remounted on the lathe and uh, camera is adjusted to try to get to where you can see what I'm doing. Uh, now I'm using a small, uh, about a half inch um, skew that I have just sharpened. Uh, I like to do this at the end, particularly on on uh, blanks that you can see through because it's much easier if you use a sharp tool at the end. Uh, you don't have to do nearly as much sanding. This particular video I'm going to go all the way to the end. I'm going to uh, sand it on, on camera and I'm also going to buff it on camera so you can see exactly what I did to it. Uh, these are really beautiful blanks when they're finished and um, the, the uh, the material, the resin, is a nice clear resin. It's it's a really good job. So I would like to make it so that everybody gets a fantastic pen out of it. And if you follow this, I think you probably will do that. So you can watch me turn for a couple of seconds here. I'm not going to cut out part of this uh, because there's just not that much of it. Um, and from here we go into the sanding shortly. When we start sanding, you'll see I have a new system, if you want to call it that. Um, I was always confusing my 400 and 600 grit sandpaper, so now I have started using 400 grit is one inch wide, 
and 600 grit is an inch and a half wide. And it's worked out really amazingly well. If you put in two different widths, then you know what you're grabbing right before you start doing your sanding and you don't screw anything up. So just a hint for anybody that wants to take advantage of it, uh, no matter how you cut your sandpaper, if you, if you cut it at two different widths, uh, suddenly it's a whole lot easier to figure out what you're grabbing when you grab it on your table. Uh, as you can see, I do the 400 sanding first. Um, it's a little hard to tell on this because there's a couple of white uh, spots in the center of the actual pattern. So it looks a little bit like I still have low spots there, but in reality everything is even and it's coming off with a nice normal um, uh, white dust. And everything is equally white dusty. And so I'm, I'm ready to go. And as you see, when I stop the lathe, you can see the uh, pattern there is white in the center. And that's why it was making it look like uh, it was not quite done. Final steps are going to be to buff with the Tripoli. Um, those who have seen this before realize that I put it on a stick and do the uh, buffing with the blank on a stick. That way you're going in a longitudinal direction instead of going in a radial direction. You've done everything up to this point in a radial direction on the lathe. And when you then go to the longitudinal direction, my theory is that this takes off all the scratches much more rapidly because you are going counter to the direction that you've done everything else. So I do do the uh, buffing on one side and then I turn the blank around and somebody pointed out to me that I'm actually going in the same direction. You're right, but I feel better about it. And it gives me the ability to get at the top and bottom evenly. It seems that you get a little better on one end than on the other. So if you switch it around, at least you get both the same. After it's done there, then I go to the white diamond and just give it a touch up on the white diamond. It really doesn't need a lot of time on there. Uh, before you know it, you have just a beautiful blank and then we will show you the finished pens shortly. First we have a close-up of the uh, virage and you can see the junction and you can also see how pretty the um, material actually is uh, in a close-up like that and then here is the whole pen. As always, thank you for watching. This is Ed from Exotic Blanks. Have a good evening. Bye now.